Yeah! Got the touch? You got Choose the tap touch. touch! Who you got for basketball? You win some, you lose more. G'day everyone, welcome back to another episode of Coast to Coast. Massive episode for the show because we are now sponsored by, of course, Tab Touch. It's this ex- excellence recognizing excellence here at the podcast. Someone's finally got on board and talk about a collaboration for the ages. I reckon uh, that's on the cards. On that topic, very reminiscent of this panel at the moment, we've got two-time club champion and the emerging golden boy, Oscar <laughs> Allen, Elliot Yo. Don't shake your head, mate. I don't like that. Anyway, emerging golden boy. Yeah, where's that come from? I saw an article in somewhere saying that you are one of three players that shouldn't be traded out of the club. It's just like, oh. it's Oscar Allen, it's untouchable. I'm like, this is the golden boy treatment. Yeah, look, I'm glad we've got a sponsor. All I'll say is about time we've been recognised, so thank you. Mm. Yoey, how are you, big boy? Could be better, could be worse, yeah, boys. This, yeah. this week's been a bit of a uh, absolute mess. An S show. Yeah. Mm. Can I, uh, before we get there, though, Yoey, we'll get to these serious chats. You don't need to start so low. Let's start up and about. <laughs> <laughs> Did you watch the Ashes last night? What do you no, mean? I didn't. No, no, I didn't. So You like your cricket, though, don't you? I do, yeah, but it's just too late. Too late. We didn't really have anything to come in for, though, did you? Uh, yeah, I had to come in for an 8 o'clock meeting. Yeah, so, he was uh, you know, got it, mate. Sleep's the most important form of recovery. Form of recovery. There you go. Did you watch cricket? Of course I did. Yeah, did I you? watched a bit. Yeah, yeah, I did. So, I watched first session half. Yeah. yeah. I made it till tea and then I started seeing the back of my eyeballs pretty quick smart. Yeah. But, uh, nah, it's exciting times, mate. When it's on at 5.30, but dinner time, great viewing mm. for some cricket. Good for cooking. Yeah. Agreed. But I'm also getting heavily into succession. You watched any succession? No, I haven't, but I have heard good things. Have Oscar, good things. the greatest television show of our generation. That's a big call. <laughs> it is terrific. That's a big call. It is call. terrific. I'm surprised you're not on it, mate. You kind of, uh, you've missed the boat here. Not too late. No, nah, but I, I, like, I'm kind of the one that likes to get a few seasons in, and this is probably one that, you know, has had how many how many seasons? It's, it's four, four seasons. Four and done. Yeah, yeah. So I was the same with Breaking Bad. I reckon I got into it after mm. the th- midway through the third. Yeah. So you don't trust so. the buzz, really. You, you, you don't want to be a sheep and follow what everyone else is doing. No, no. I just like that if it's consistent and it's been getting good reviews over a course of you know a few seasons, then I'll whack out as many as I can. Right just up in your one alley. Hit. This yeah. is third ra- third highest rated IMDb TV show of all time. Is it? What's, oh. what's number one? Thrones up there? No, not anymore. What's number one? I think Sopranos is number one. Yeah, though. What's two? <sighs> no, nah, I couldn't tell you off the back of my head. It's break, uh, it's breaking, bad, yeah. breaking Bad would be up. Yeah, yeah. maybe it's Breaking Bad. Yeah. Um, how far into the season? I've just I? done the finale of season two, so I had some Oh, su- you are so far back. Oh, my yeah, God. But I had some succession in the cricket, and it got to 11, and I just went, I want this night to go on for forever. Forever, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Had, um, to, had to give it up because I knew today was on the cards, and Yoey... Mate, I... Just pause on it. I've been watching a show called Alone and Gaffy got me on it. Have you ever heard of it? Yeah, I th- I've heard there's like 10 seasons of this show. It's insane. Explain the premise to Oscar. I think Gaffy's been talking to me about it, but you go on. <laughs> oh, it's very good. So they basically they drop... Ten people, yeah, no, on, yeah, in the middle of nowhere, yeah, and you got to survive off the land. Yeah, so it's different location each season, right? Uh first two seasons are the same. Third season they've gone somewhere somewhere else, and now I'm on the fourth, and they've gone back to where they were. But they're in different spots of, this place. you know. Yeah, but it is it is brutal. Apparently, there's like one episode's big macho man. He's like, yeah, like I'm made for the outdoors, and then. He's walking around. He's like, is that is that a bear? Tra- is that a bear track? No, no, I'm out. And like calls it like ten hours in. She's like, for no reason, just sees like bare footprints. He's like, no, nah, I'm out of here. I was about to ask you what the the craziest thing is that's happened. Seemingly, oh, no. yeah. Uh, like, no one's been chewed by something in the wildlife. No, right? nothing hectic, nothing sort of like that. But there's been some encounters there where you'd be like, okay. Like people have been face to face or very very close in your life, and they just go, oh, oh man, this is like they, they got, weren't expecting that. Have they got helpers nearby in case it gets not scary? nearby? So they have they have a like a satellite phone. Mm. So they ring them and basically they go, yep, yeah, I'm tapping out or like I need medical assistance straight up. So and they come as quick as they possibly can. It's still a fair bit though. Big payday for the winner. Half a mil US. Mm. So whoever lasts the longest time wins that for the season. Yeah. Okay, cool. That makes sense. Imagine if, like, 
you're someone who is there for a couple of weeks or however long it is, I don't know, and you don't have any encounters, and then the next person goes like first day sees a bear. It's like yeah, okay, I'm out. <laughs> like, I've had enough. Do you get to choose one item to bring in, or do they just ten? Give you- they give you ten items that you can take with you. So a lot of them obviously take like an axe, a flint, or a whatever. Carb and flint. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like all that stuff. But imagine yeah. if you just brought something weird in, Oz. You're like, I need my Elmo to like. It's just, I just need this one. Yeah, yeah. they have. They have crazy. like yeah. <laughs> They have a certain amount of things as well that doesn't count as a 10 item. So, like, supposedly um, some sort of charcoal paste to brush their teeth, that doesn't count. Okay. So, like, there's some sort of duty of care. They have medicos come every, I think, 48 to 72 hours to check on their blood pressure or all that, just so they're not... But that's the only interaction they have. You're not the first person to pump a line up, so I might Very go around good. to it. I, and Gaffy was, like, on me. It was like, mate, you got to watch it, you got to watch it. And I was like, oh, yeah, like, like all things. Are, you know, I oh, did this yeah, job I'll with the boys. On, have you watched I'll the boys? The boys is terrific, mate. I yeah. had to basically bend Yoey's fingers backwards to so listen to it. So good. Me. I was like, mate, you will love this And show. amazing. Yeah, it's terrific. <laughs> and yeah. amazing. The most vulgar <laughs> humour ever. <laughs> right of it, all right, right of it. That's the end of TV section. Okay, okay, So let's get serious there for a minute. We'll dip back out of footy talk after this, but Yoey... Oh man, heart breaks for you, but yeah, you know, I'm sure you're not here for sympathy. But it's your third stint on the sideline for this season. You've gone from calf to to halt your start of your year, and then mm. you've, you're a doctor. And I'm guessing the adductor, I'm guessing, was a little bit like this hip thing where you've gone in for a scan, sort of just hoping it's soreness and not really knowing what the true extent was going to be. So talk, because that's kind of what happened with the hip, right? You just felt some soreness and then nah. got in. No, <laughs> it's a complete opposite. I've nailed it. Yeah, yeah. You, you were very, very close. Why don't you talk us uh, through the emotions of finding out then in the last instant? No, I knew this hip was because it was very similar to something I had in seventeen, towards the back end of the season. Uh, but we're in a, obviously in a lot different position uh, than where we are now, and we're pushing for finals and we're playing. Um, you could sort of jab it, but unfortunately, I know that if we kept doing that, then in two, three weeks' time, I, I could play, but that would be the end of it. I would have thought that'd be the end of the season, and I'd just be way too sore to to deal with it. So, try and be proactive, knock it on the head, and get it done as quick as possible. So, yeah, uh, it's not the best. It's quite an irritating injury, um, but hopefully, that. You know, we've got on it quick enough that I can actually play maybe a few games in the back end of the year. Your mental resilience has got to be out of this world uh, with what you've gone through in the last four years now, mm. because you've come back and you had shades of the old Yoey, like the it was all there, and that doesn't happen without the amount of hard work that you do in mm. the, in these resets. Yeah. So how hard is it? I know, you know, the, describe to the fans that might not know about how difficult it's been, not just physically, but um, but mentally, to have to get back up to continue to reset again yeah it has been very difficult uh like from a perspective of just wanting to be out there and play as much as you can i I hate being in rehab like i'm not basically i'm an afl footballer i'm not a full-time rehab specialist so i just want to be able to get back to playing football and helping the team as much as i possibly can and to be on the sidelines again it's it's hard it's frustrating um, I'm trying to do everything that I possibly can in order to get myself out there. Um, do you have mental tricks to help yourself be motivated or to not think about the scenario? To kind of just like um, blank out during your sessions and not think about the long-term stuff, you know? Uh, it's not so much of that. It's, I guess, going through OP where you don't have a timeline. That was the hardest thing that I've ever possibly been through. And it was like a matter of things will get you, you know, day to day. And it was a matter of, see how you go. If you feel good next week, then we'll progress you. And it was never sort of any timeline, whereas a lot of these injuries, I've always had a timeline. So mm. for me, it's a lot easier to work to that rather than just being told, oh, yeah. we'll just go to when you feel better. Um, that's been that's been sort of something that's got, got me through a fair bit of this, but it's the consistent sort of knocks that just keep, I guess, yeah, can get to you quite a fair bit. And... Yeah, it sucks. I mean, unfortunately, like there's external pressures as well, and I have the most pressure on myself. Uh, I feel like I'm my own harshest critic, and um, yeah, it sucks that you know I'm not able to be out there and do what I want to do, which is play football and be as competitive as possible. No, and I love to coach uh, your quotes during the week with '96 about how excited you are for the young boys to show the fruits, but how much you want to be here to be turning it around for this club as well. That's um, yeah, it was great to hear. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I love the football club. 
Like, I want to do everything possible. And, you know, whether it's I'm going to be there when the next generation are holding up the, the cup, like, hopefully it's a couple of years away <laughs> and I'm still here. But, you know, if it's four, five years, six years, ten years, whatever, and the kids that are playing now are holding up that cup, you want to feel a part of that, that you've done something that, you know, you can hang your hat on going, mm-hmm. like, I, I helped those boys get there. It's something you can't really train yourself for until you experience it, Oz. I mean, you've gone from a, a season where you just have to train knowing that there's there's an end goal, but it's 18 months away mm. to play again in the following season. And you can't really train your mind to be that mentally strong or to break those mental barriers until you have to do it, right? You yeah. can't do reps of it to practice. Yeah, it is a strange one. It, you probably... You don't obviously think about it because you never intend that I'm going to miss a significant chunk of footy. But you just got to get through it whatever way you can. So some of those training sessions is like you're just getting out all the anger you have at the world because like, this sucks. Like this is my hobby thing I love doing and it's my job. So it's almost my release and what I do Monday to Friday. Very, very frustrating. And yeah, you don't wish it upon anyone. Even when you see guys from other clubs get hurt, you just like, like you know what you're going to have to go through for a, the foreseeable period. So um, it's been a shame that we've had so many guys. Like I think if Tommy Cole, hopefully he'll be back soon, but he missed all of last year and then played a couple of games and has missed a massive chunk of this year as well. So um, there's a lot of guys that have been through it and hopefully um, better days are on the horizon on the injury front. In a, in a disappointing day, Yoey, in a side where 12 of us have, uh, 12 of the players have had one tackle or less and you've come out and had 10 and had a decent crack in this game, the team's going to sadly miss you, mate. So all the best and just make it speedy, will you? Or are you down there? Just real quick, real quick, <laughs> time for us, mate. Yeah. The game itself, I won't spend too much time on. I think everything's been spoken about internally, externally, but... I will touch on just a couple of things. <clears throat> Shui spoke to the West and was conveying that um, you know he got a bit emotional talking to some teammates post-game, um, really when reflecting on how much the club means to him, to a lot of other people uh, inside the four walls and, and the amount of pride that should be felt over such tough performances like that. Did you find yourself in similar positions? Did you see any of that when the captain was talking either post-game or on the Monday? What was that review like? Yeah, like just talk to me a bit about those aftermaths yeah i think everyone's pretty emotional obviously boot spoke to the group and and that's what he's referring to there like you could see the emotion in him and if you don't feel that way after that you probably don't really belong here in my perspective without being too harsh like it was a really really dark day and then throughout the week um it's been hard to bounce back like generally monday to friday you go through different emotions after the game you're disappointed or you're excited and then you kind of bounce back to to have you regularly feel but it has been difficult this week and like everything you touched on like you feel bad for the fans the supporters you you're letting down your family your friends who've who've got you along the way so look i can't um reflect any more on what he said like that's exactly how i feel and i'm, I'm sure it's the same with you yoey yeah yeah he did speak about it and it was quite an emotional sort of time i think we as you know oscar probably you know mentioned but you do you feel you feel horrible you feel like you've let a lot of people down Mm. and internally yourself you feel like you've let yourself down and you haven't performed to the best of your ability and that's probably the worst thing as well and then you've let down your teammates by not doing that and then it just sort of festers into this big thing where yeah you do feel pretty emotional um but you also got to be realistic there's not many there's not many times where in teams and especially when I was a young kid coming through and I was, you know, played a handful of games, we had so many players that were so experienced that I actually got sheltered and covered by a lot of experienced players. There's ne- I haven't really seen such a discrepancy in experience from the top to the bottom. Like we had, I think it was like eight to ten kids or something like that under 20 games of experience like, we've just thrown them into the deep end whereas and what was it in your day two or three of them not even that not even that you'd have yeah two max mm-hmm. probably that would be under 20 games and the rest would be 40 and you know there's just this really good mix but because of where we're at at the moment we're just getting so much experience into these young kids and sure like losing these big margins can be demoralizing to a certain sense but the experience and I guess for the long term, silver lining is that once they're eighty to hundred game players, like they're just going to be so much better for it, for it. Which yeah, similar indoctrination, indoctrinations, didn't you? 
Yeah, I think so. We have the red bag. So if you're the youngest player, you carry the red bag, which got all the snacks for the plane and stuff. <laughs> and, yeah. yeah, and I carried that for like four years because yep. I was the youngest player from 2018 through to 2021, pretty much. Like yep. a bum bag. Uh, uh, it's like it has all the yeah, yeah. It's like a physio yeah. bag with like yeah. lollies and stuff in it. Yeah, and the most like popular bloke on the planet. Not quite lollies. No, it's like music. Yeah, music bars, bars and like, stuff like that. Yeah. So, well, yeah. 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 So, and the young boy would go around, and now, like, do, you, do you want a music bar on the plane? Boys would be like, get off, you know. What are you doing up at business get, class? Get out of business class, mate. Like, piss yeah. off. Uh, yeah, but it's a different player every week now. Yeah. So, like, that's that's a, that's a different Not even topic. that. There's nine blokes holding the bag. Yeah. They're holding they they can't hands. work out who's the youngest. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you enjoy the, the flight home, boys? What was that 145 landing like in the morning? Tough. Yeah, yeah awesome. that's a tough flight. That and Brisbane are probably the two toughest flights coming back because you just get the headwinds and it's just so long. We almost miss some um, cutoff at Sydney as well. Mm. Like if yeah. you if you get delayed on the tarmac, you're just praying that you get off the ground. Otherwise, you're going straight back to the hotel and have another night there. Yeah, grim pickings. Did you? Did Adelaide's you, the same too. They had that curfew. Did yeah. They? yeah, Adelaide. Did you smash some salt and vinegar chips in some despair at home? What did oh, you do when you got back at two? Absolutely, I smashed them in the on the plane, mate. You got you can't go away from your values. Yeah, look, <laughs> the problem was I got home and everything was closed, so I was going to get something for dinner, sort of stuff, and just went straight to sleep. And oh, it was the exact same. Yeah, thing, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it was a tough milestone to celebrate, Oz, uh, but you did beat your 100th goal on the weekend. Oh, it's not really like a milestone, Oh, is but it? it's got to be, man. Like, when goals are more scarce than what they were back in the day, you should you should raise a bat for your 100th, 200th, 300th, 400th goal. You're only going to do it five times, maybe. Mate, yeah. Look, hopefully... Hope. Hope. hope well, you will, but i just tempering it. Yeah, hopefully there's a lot more to come. Um, did you know it was your 100th? No, I think like I knew I was around the mark, but it's not really something you think about. Um, I do remember being a younger player, and like when opposing players come and you were watching from the players' box, you'd look at their ratio. So it's like, oh, he kicks one and a half per game, or he kicks two per game. So I'm trying to get that up to to two a game is like a good ratio. Anything yeah. above that's like, yeah, that guy's a good player. Yeah. 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 Well, you yeah, if you kick another hundred, you're in the top ten Eagles, uh, you know, all time goal scorer. So you can move up pretty quick. There you go. How many goals you kicked, Joey? Give me ballpark. You'd be kicked more than 100? No, I haven't. How many games you've played? I think it's like 83. Oh, and it's, is it? Yeah, close. He's 73. 73. So that's, that's yeah. I actually had an appearance at Hayes Chase and someone actually asked me the same question. And this was Tuesday. So that's why it's kind of a bit gotcha. fresh. Yep. Gotcha. Yep. There you go. You got a favourite of the 73? Grand can't, say, can't say grand final. No. Too easy. It's a set shot, mate. Come now. Uh, my favourite goal of yours, you kicked some belters at the SCG, like long ones from 60. I reckon you kicked two yeah. in 2018 when we played the Swans there. You kicked a good yeah. one. It was, oh, it was a shocking time of day. It was like the 11 a.m. game at Gold Coast, I reckon, where you've balked around a few punters in the right forward pocket. Yeah, that was a good one. Uh, yeah, was pretty decent. Snagged on my left. Yeah. Kicked, a, kicked a good one in my first game against GWS along the boundary line. About Snagged that one on my left. Yeah, 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 that was... Uh, no, I reckon... I reckon the final against Hawthorne where we had it Subi. You've quoted us saying that's the loudest you've ever heard a crowd. Get goosebumps still thinking about it. Yeah. Get goosebumps still thinking about first it. First goal insane. of the game? Oh, was it? Possibly. I think it was, yeah, first or second. Maybe our first goal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that was insane. That was insane. Had to tap it on and then kicked it and yeah, the roar was just so loud. So JD's three away from how Five. many? 500 goals. He will be the 64th AFL VFL footballer to bring up 500, should and when he does so, mm. which is quite a big effort as well. It is. Um, right, Oz, how many goals have you kicked this year? 35 ish. Yeah. How somewhere. many have been set shots? 32. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that you know that is so yeah. classic. Well, I went a few you've done that's not. Yeah, I went to a stage that was like. He's not humble about it, is he? But like, no. you've got to remember, like, if you don't kick a set shot, like, the, no, I just so don't ever kick set shots. Like, I just, like, I think there was a stage I hadn't kicked a live play goal and I kicked like 30 goals for the year and they're all just set shots. So you got the fourth highest percentage of top 25 goal kickers at the moment with 91%, which is pretty sweet. Who are the other players that have kicked a goal every game this year? I do know this. You go, because I know the answer to this. And he's done a bit of research. And it's not on his sheet either. No. I purposely kept it off so he wouldn't cheat. And he still knows. No, I'm, I know who kicks goals every week. <laughs> yeah, do you know what? Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah, exactly. Why exactly. exactly. Well, one of his, one of them's his mate. So yeah. like, he'd be torn on he his mate. He has no mates. <laughs> uh, well, he pretends he knew him. So, do you want to give me some names or what? Or are you just going to fail at this? Uh, Kerno? Yeah, good one. Yeah. Is that you, mate? 
Who are we nah, talking nah, about? Nah. WA boy. Norton. Yeah, Norton. Yeah. And one more. Good young player. Good Tall. Young. There's two of them. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Uh, I want to say King. Yeah, yeah, which one? Well, probably the one that's played more. Yeah. yeah. Ben. <laughs> which one's yeah. that? Max. <laughs> uh, no, it's Ben. <laughs> I get that's uh, a good gag when you play him and they're running for goal and yeah. you just call him his brother's name. Yeah, but I reckon I was actually calling him his right name. <laughs> so I didn't know which one was. <laughs> that's quality. Uh, the silver lining is the uh, the annual QBE Foundation Goals for Goods. You hear about this? So uh, the Sydney Swans yeah, actually pledged. <laughs> to shut you nodding. You know, oh, I did see this. Yeah, so they committed Saw this on Twitter. They committed three grand per Sydney goal to go towards the community partners and the Swans Foundation. So they've raised God, ninety-three they'd, they'd grand. Be flat, wouldn't they? <laughs> They would be, but geez, you guys give back well. So well done, you good charitable Thanks, people. Yeah. They make enough money as it is anyway, yeah. QBE. So uh, Tim Kelly was charged with making reckless contact with an umpire. That's $1,000 if you have an early plea. Yeah. Have you run into an umpire before? Like, accidentally? Yeah, plenty of times. Yeah, lots. And been lied in the pocket? I reckon, uh, yeah, once or twice. Yep. I reckon that is the stiffest way no, to lose money never. in the AFL. I don't, yeah, I don't, I've never... I'll just make sure, like... Because a lot of mine is off the ball. So he's like the off the ball umpire. So he's watching it. I'm watching the ball and we're like collide across in the diagonal. Oh, sorry, mate. Like, and he's like, yeah, yeah all good. Yeah. So yeah. like, like if, so if, generally yeah. they're like, oh, no. So, so no, how are they plucking this one out? No, nah, so he must have bumped into him and not said anything. Like, I oh, swear. Oh, you reckon the apology yeah. clears you? Yeah, mate, or, I reckon it yeah, does. The apo- oh, it depends how hard you run into him too. Like, depends if he's pinged you for a free kick five minutes prior and there's some yeah. intent yeah I think well there's I think there's a bit of that to it but the stiffest way to get stitched up these days is to just do a normal tackle well it's just tough these days because there's no the hardest way to, well the easiest way to get fined is to just get pinged with a normal tackle some head high contact tackling yeah yeah, yeah but that's... it's it's hard because you want to tackle them because you don't want to let them get rid of and dispose of the ball but then you don't want to hurt them and then it's just hard. Like, do you do you pin him for a three sixty now? Is that is that the line? Like, it's just hard as players to try and find where do you draw the line on what's a good mm. tackle and what's not a good tackle, Very and what's well holding said. the ball and what isn't. They had some instances over the weekend. I can't remember if it was just our game of times where the people have let the tack let let the person go in the tackle, fearful yep. of, of exactly. I, that. I had about yeah. I had about two where I could have absolutely mint someone, and I've rotated them, got them to there, and was like, uh oh. Hmm. And let him go. Mm-hmm. Like I, I almost they had to look at one for for that I tackled Blakey on, and that was like I put him down. Like I could have put a pillow under his head. The Saints this week um, haven't played. I think Ross and Simo haven't faced each other since 2019 in the coaches box. What's Simo's record against uh, against Ross the boss? Got to be good because we won a lot of derbies in the row. Yeah, yeah. I would have thought. I would have thought that. So it's nine and three. Ooh. So, like, if you're going into, like, a table tennis match and you've owned someone nine and three... Comfy. You're feeling yeah. pretty good mentally. Even if I've got the bat that's, like, missing a lot of felt on it. Those yeah. three would have been pretty horrific three, though, I reckon. <laughs> that was, like, when Freo were flying, too. Yeah. Early days when I first got to the club. We were losing derbies by, like, 10, 12 goals, I think. All right. We've got um, Duggo's 150th coming up this weekend. Any special ce- celebrations around the great man? We saw a good video this morning. Yeah, we did. We, did. we saw a good video this morning yeah. of him. Um you oh, would have yeah. seen that too. You oh, did yeah. a great oh, job, yeah. mate. You clipped it. You, I did. It. Very yeah. happy. Oh, this is cool. how well I trained the team. Mate. Nah, yeah. very good. The Duggo's video was good. Yeah. Bit of humour at the start. I hope, I hope they. I hope they release they the will. whole video because it's the the start is very very funny. They will release that in Instagram. Do you think I need Duggo's clearance to release that? No, no, it'd be fine. I wouldn't have thought so. Okay. Duggo Why? doesn't care. He Why? doesn't have Instagram, mate. He won't say it. That's very true. <laughs> I don't know. It's a weird thing to. It's kind. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm a bit touchy about it in terms of whether someone's going to come back and go. You shouldn't release that. I've been clipped for worse stuff than releasing something like that. Yeah, yeah, but you've le- you've released some pretty horrific stuff. I know, I know. Anyway, all right. Well, you'll see it, fans. You'll see some Duggo action. Stay close to Instagram. I believe is where it's going out. If you don't have that, find someone with Instagram. What do you think of Mason Cox getting his glasses pulled off his head? Have you done anything <laughs> like that in the field before? It was reminiscent of Brucey Dool and the flying doormat and his headband going. Oh, I love it. Oh, I think it's great. But have, uh, have you gone low blows you around? Top, you players? top the thousand buck fine. Yeah, have you gone low blow before of players? You know, wearing or doing certain things, and you're like, bugger this, I'm taking it off. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know. It's somehow this is a massive thing because it's like, oh, you can't see without it, and 
Yeah, like I guess. So there's a, there's a bigger issue there now. Yeah, but remember there's other Sicily, things are like Sicily took uh, Norton's head. Yeah, he got, off fined, got for fined for that. For that. Yeah, which has nothing to do with medical. So you think if it's actually aiding to their health, then leave it. But if not, like a silly headband. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Easiest way to get a fine. Take someone's headband off. There we go. I like off. I used to find it funny, like the old days, like not even the old days, but early to 2010s like guys would lose their boot and you know, they just like throw, throw it further it. away yeah. but now it's like free kick and yeah. you get fined for it like that stuff was always pretty humorous well, I grew to watch. Up, yeah I grew up watching Lynchy throw his glove too and because I was a Freo supporter I was like why doesn't someone just someone that's a little bit of a you know arsey about that just go and pick up and throw it over the fence like, <laughs> I think they did eventually some people did that with yeah Lynch. so yeah the trainers had to go and pick him up Mm. When he threw the glove, he had to throw it to the trainer because otherwise opposition players yeah. like get it and throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I miss that stuff. I know Oz is, but are you paying attention to under-18s footy at the moment? Uh, yes and no. Bit too much lawn care going on for you or what? No, nah, like not, not just what you see in AFL, like on the AFL media thing. Yeah. Did, so, you, did you watch the game? We were playing at the same time, mate. They don't have replays of it, do they? No, nah, but I have seen the highlights. I know who's going relatively well. Yeah. Yeah. Good win. Yeah, great win. They bounced back. They got their pants pulled down by the Allies two weeks ago. Allies best team in the country now. Really? Which is unexpected. They got well, farms, that's good. Is that because they have the whole uh, academies of... Yeah, but they've always had the academies and they were never good until this year. Yeah, but those academies now, they're starting yeah. to really pump out they've got a, players. They've got a couple... So the quarters are... um. 25 flats yeah and they've had a couple bikes who get 40 every week one of them called Saunders he'll go like top 10 pick another kid's very good left footer um, and their full forward is a thing his son's academy he's like 196 almost academy. 100 kilos yeah. gun yeah. yeah so this Clay Hall from Peel Thunder had was best on ground he had 33 touches 9 clearances 7 inside mm. 50s yep. he was bog yep. and the wingman Aiden O'Driscoll the younger brother of Nathan, Nathan. and yep. uh, Emma yeah you know that being a big Frio man as you are, no, yeah. Um, Not had, anymore, mate. Come on, <laughs> he had a, whoa up. He had a he had a typical bandy wingman game with twenty disposals mm. and twelve marks. Dan Curtin was good, mate. <laughs> Missing him. Well, what did he do? Do you know who Dan Curtin is? Absolutely not. Nah, so he's like he got best on in that AIS game when they played the VFL side. He's WA key back. He's about one nine six, and he played midfield in the weekend at thirty. How'd the Ram go? He kicked a goal on that twenty. The Ram was good. Yeah, nice. Tholstrup, he was good too. What was he like as a fella? Cause he trained with us, didn't he? Larry. Yeah, the ran. Yeah, quite yeah. Larry. Yeah. 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 Love yeah. it. He, he, good fella. I actually yeah. saw him in the cafe not that long ago. Yeah, cool. We've got two more games. So the WA boys taking on Vic Country at the Wacker Friday night. Bit of Harley Reid will be in town. Don't know if you've heard of him. He'll be, he'll be around. So we'll get to see him in action. I haven't. No, I haven't heard okay. of him. Okay. And then Saturday, <laughs> where the Waffle Boys are playing at the Wacker. So it's double dose at the Wacker. Cool. Bandy's been learning East Freo names all week. It's been devastating to my uh, succession time. Yep. Um, did you see about the Karatha annual cockroach races? That oh, I have not. What is this? No. Oh, beautiful. So you don't know about this? No. So this has been going on for three decades. Have you this ever been elite. to a, Have you been to mice racing at an, an amateur footy club or anything like that? Yeah, like hermit crabs, all that. Like very similar, isn't yeah. it? You just throw a cockroach in the middle, whatever. No, one. it's different to that. So it's a proper organised night where well, I've done it with mouse racing, but this is cockroach. So you'll bring out different cockroaches and then you'll bid on them. They'll have names and whatever, and it'll you do it up with your program. So How do you like, know which ones which? Put a different colour texture on it or something. Well, you just put them in a certain box, and you're like, right, we're bringing out this box. It's number sixty one, and on your programs it might be like thumper time. So, like, Thumper Time out of blah, 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 his form is this. This is his preseason yeah, yeah, record. Like, a bit of a, it's yeah. Yeah. And, and then time yeah. it. Yeah. Well, then you've got to bid for it to make that yours. Yeah, I've done some rat race stuff like yeah. this. There yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a hermit crab race. Yeah. So, anyway, you've got, to, you've got to buy it anywhere between five and 500 bucks, and then you'll do the races, and there are heats and finals. 500 bucks. Well, that's what the bid could get to. If you get yeah. late in the night and you haven't bought one yet, then the prices might increase. But, anyway, they got to um, the final, and then if you win the final, you get 1500 bucks. But there's a caveat to yeah. taking home the money. What do you reckon the caveat is? It's got to go, go back over the bar. bar. Nope. Ooh. Ooh. you got to eat the cockroach. No. That's great. Would you eat it? <laughs> How For the- 1500 probably. Well, I don't mind it because it means that, you know, you stop generations of just superior cockroaches just winning this race. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't breed them. You right can't breed them. <laughs> so I don't mind it. Like you nip it in the bud there. All right. All right. We're gonna have a short break. Get to the questions. He's a genius, Luke. You got the touch. Yeah. Got the touch. You got choose the tap touch. touch. Who you got for basketball? You win some, you lose more. 
How do you like that? Oh, it's in show ads. Mate, mm. it's all happening for us. Do you want oh, to I've the- seen everything. Oh, I have seen everything. Yeah. Ads. Let's go. Do you want to kick us off with a question or what? I can kick it off. Yep. No, nah, I will. We, I'll kick uh, it off. Start, start, go. Yeah, 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 mate. We're, yeah. We're, we're rolling the whole time. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, we spoke about this and we saw a view of it the other day. And this is from Short for Decker. It was the 10th anniversary of something special. What was it? <laughs> we watched a video in Sydney a bit of it. You rolling you, around you on your in, on your left foot. You were involved. Lacing someone out. Great question. No, mate. I don't know. I'm going to play dummy. Oh, you're a liar. I'm play dummy, yeah. Come on. Miracle on grass, mate. Tell me about it. Dribbling one missy bloke. Somehow lands in his lap. Talk to me about it. Good wow. night afterwards. How many games oh, did you epic. played um, going into this game, you reckon? I reckon I was sitting on like 20-odd. Yeah. It's the second season then. Yeah, second season. Right. Yep. Yep. Um, playing in the back line. Just trying to play my role for the team. Did you have a game? Or were you rarely sighted? Uh, I think I played all right, yeah. Sweet. Yeah, I generally when we played, when I was in Brizzy, I played on Motlop. And there was one game in my, we played him twice that year. And I kept him, I got him subbed out and I had 23 and I didn't get a Rising Star nomination. So mm. I still hold that because no, no one was watching Brisbane games. It was, I was filthy. I was actually filthy. You never get a Rising Star nomination. No, nah, and I was Ooh. filthy because I should have got one that game. If you go back and watch it and you watch, uh, I kept, him. yeah, I absolutely just pulled his pants down. And I was filthy because I had a fair bit of it as well. <laughs> well and they- almost took Mark of the Year. Um, what were they down? What were we down? 50 what? 52? Yeah, we were down... 53? We were down 10 goals um, about that. And then it just was... It was a weird thing. It, like, everything just sort of came our way. And then by, like, halfway through the fourth, it was like, oh, we're actually close here. Like, yeah, we, we might get close. And then with about five minutes left, it was like, oh, my God, we can actually win this game. Like, what the hell's going on? And then Source, the ball came in. They They stuffed up. They probably should have... You know, held control of the ball. They just went quick, and we had numbers behind. And big source merits taking a mark, and I was running pretty much next to him. And they've called play it on for, for play on for no reason. And source has given it to me, and I was like, oh, I didn't call for it. I don't want it. And then just looked up, and I guess it's just the importance of having, I guess, being able to go both sides of your body. Did you hit McGrath with the pass? No, I hit Blackie. So I had kind of I saw. So I've got the ball and. I had nowhere to go other than the boundary because I had someone pressuring me and I was lucky that I had a left foot that I could use to try and chisel around the corner to get to Blackie. Blackie, great ground ball. Yeah, and like awesome ground ball, but I just had to get it there as quick as possible. So it was, and it was, you know, I had to curl it the inside. So I got it there. It's caught turned at 45, yeah. Yeah, and got it there as quick as possible and because we knew there wasn't much time left and we had to get it on. He's done this wicked ground ball, kicked this absolute floater into I think maybe... Uh, Jed Adcock I think it might have been yeah. or, or Jolly Pat Fool and he like handballed to Richard didn't he or something he's handballed it to someone and then there was a Born. shock and ground ball to um, Jed Adcock and then he's handballed it to Zorks and then Zorks has kicked it at Bunge on his like milestone game love it oh like you Bunge couldn't Ripper. script it you couldn't script it he was my one of my 18s coaches Bunge yeah you could yeah. not script it and then from that point on it was like I was right behind the kick and he's just kicked down it's just slotted in like I like, would have gone in by like I reckon 30 centimetres it's just rolled in and I was asked about the celebrations afterwards very good very good did you make finals this year no, we just missed out that year. Yeah. So that was the year, that was the whole Essendon saga and that. And so they got, mm. I'm pretty sure they got Docked. kicked out. And it was like, we, I think we finished ninth and we had an opportunity. We were playing Geelong down in Geelong, last game of the year. And if we had a one and a result from another game went our way, then we would have played finals. We would have slotted in. And Ryan Lester ended up getting the ball I reckon maybe 20 out snapped it got marked on the goal line and we lost the game Whoa, dagger. Um, but then the other, the, I think the other team won by a certain amount and it would have, we, but it would have been on percentage class on grass how good mm. Bella Boris um, most memorable fan experience while you're trying to collect yourself and think of one of them I remember when we did a back chat podcast on like a Wednesday and by Friday when we rolled into the Gabba for a um, captain's run someone had made a sign Tom Barris the mad dog from Scarborough which was <laughs> spoken about like 48 hours prior on the potty <laughs> and she made this full sign and I was just like that's so classic like who has the time yeah but that was that was a memorable one yeah you'd have better than that so what do you got oh there's plenty of memorable ones I mean we've got such wonderful fans but the one that sits fresh at the moment is you know the weekend just gone 
we just had so many people rock up on Tuesday after possibly one of the darkest days in club history. And we've had so many fans just rock up, so passionate, come down, support the players. Like that That's the stuff that, you know, you're grateful for. Um, and you, you have to thank the fans for that. There's there's plenty, like, there's so many interactions with fans that you have that are just wonderful experiences, but that one just sits very fresh, um, I guess, because of the circumstance. That's a serious one, too. And you had little Nate on board, the telethon kid from the weekend's game, who had mm. an absolute blast with him and his mother. We got a couple of videos of that, Oz. Yeah, that was great. You can go your serious notion or your comical. You got a fan experience that comes to mind, or you just want to. We used to do a lot of that, too. Like, yeah. before COVID, we'd have, like, it'd almost be. Not every week, but we'd do quite a fair bit of that every year. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, since COVID, it's kind of it, you know dropped off a fair bit. But we're starting to pick up now, yeah. which is really good. I guess players are. Yeah, that was pretty special with Nate in the week. I go with that. That was um, sort of probably the first time I've done it since I've played. Like 2019, you kind of got your head in the sand, just trying to play. You're not really worried or thinking about anything else. So that was a pretty special special weekend, and um, he was awesome. Great, great little kid, and he had a lot of fun. So that was. That was a really good experience. Tom Brad wants to know why you always three putt. <laughs> oh, I know who that. That's one of my best mates down from Bustleton. Um, Sounds like he knows your golf game. And he says, well. "Why, why you won't make Rosie and Seb a friend?" <laughs> What's it? No, it doesn't. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know what that means. Uh, well, Rosie's his daughter. I was down there a couple weeks ago um, for his thirtieth and his his wife's thirtieth. Um, and yeah, Rosie's his daughter, and they just had a beautiful boy called Seb. So, oh, yeah, very nice. Yeah, congratulations, yeah. mate. And oh no, nah, it's probably not a con- no. Nah. No, I'm not gonna say. What about your toilet golf? How's that going? We were uh, three putts. Yeah, look, I mean, you're trying he's, to claim he's... that you're the best golfer in the club until Jaden Hunt lobbed, which is a bit. No, stiff. I didn't. I didn't claim anything. But you would think that you are right. I did not claim anything. Would you think if Hunty didn't lob that you would have the best handicap at the club? Yes. Yeah, you. Well, there you go. Yeah, but I don't go around saying that, mate. Nah, but mentally you're thinking it constantly. I don't need to mentally. I just, you know. Just am it. Yeah. I just, just, I just live it. it. <laughs> yeah. Just live the experience. Because you and I have a lot of conversations about golf. We have a bit. Yeah. So, but I don't go around puff my chest out pre-hunty going, I'm the best golfer here pre-hunty. and all that. Which he would come in, he'd have a very good round on the weekend and he'd be like, oh. Oh, is this the bloke that, that was Instagramming his hole in one, is it? Is that coming from that dude? Don't be jealous. Just, yeah. that's Don't uh, be bitter, be that's better. That's a fair point, uh, John Dawson, what's the best beer and meal at the Broken Hill? It's a good question. It's a great question. Uh, we've got a lot. All the food there is very good. I mean, if you go on entrees, it's hard to go past the Korean lamb ribs and the pork belly bites. Yeah, the pork belly bites are my favourite. They're, they're, they're yeah. the best. That's the best entree. Uh, but I'm pretty... Obviously, I'm biased. But the steak sandwich mm. is... Oh, I think it's probably one of the best in WA. You got you some go. caramelised onions in there or there's no onions or what? Yeah, yep. Yeah. But they're... It's interesting because the AHA, they do the whole steak sandwich comp. I think ours is the best, but for some reason they they don't. Uh, Who yeah. wins? Uh, I think there's politics involved. Okay, with but you. we'll keep it at that. Uh, Kira Orpwood uh, just said hot, and I'm assuming that was for me, so I appreciate it, Kira. That's Thanks. good feedback. Hot. Good feedback. Hot. Stephen Gosh, <laughs> how do you manage ADHD with footy? That's a wow. And yeah. what were the challenges you overcame early on? <laughs> um, I've never been diagnosed, but I've the. Yeah, they do say there's there's a spectrum. Um, do you reckon you but like? I don't think it's that though. I don't think it, I don't think it's ADHD though. I think my spectrum might be on something different. But you just think you're a very excitable man. I'm just passionate, and I love what I do. So if you if you're doing something that you loved, you never work a day in your life. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that old chestnut. But I, I come in with just so much energy and so much enthusiasm because as a kid. All I wanted to do was be an AFL footballer and I just love what I do and I love being in the football club and I wouldn't have it any other way. So, yeah. Does that then, does that then off topic, does that then scare you for what's post? Knowing yeah, that, absolutely. Knowing that That's you're a not, great question. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, but you've got to be, like, I'm realistic too that it's inevitable and it can't be forever. So I have things in place that, I'm trying to find something that outside of football will tickle that, I guess, that will scratch that itch, really, that I, I have with football. Worth sharing or just keep it close to your chest for now? Oh, I'm studying property investment development at Curtin, um, doing commerce. So I'm a fair few units in, in with that now. So, What's the Curtin campus like? 
I'm nice. online, but I have mm. been previously before for a few units. Yeah, it's pretty good. You, 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 UWI, aren't you? UWI, man. Yeah. Um, what? <laughs> must you be nice. You asked the question, I asked. Oh, did I get uppity? I had to go to Murdoch. Why are you the, getting that so uppity? That was the sticks. Yeah, come on, man. Mate. Well, um, I didn't have good grades nah, on. You, you know what was fun? Um, my partner, Lorna, graduated her master's from Curtin and they do fireworks at the mm. graduation. I was mm. like, this is pretty nice. Yeah, me yeah I was, that was a great <laughs> night. I hear him go all the time because I'm not far from gotcha. Curtin and oh, I hear him go all the time. Off. Scares the crap out of the dogs. <laughs> yeah, bugger. Damn you, Curtin. Um, I have to sit there and bloody cuddle the dogs to the, sleep. The, the, the most paranoid. important question and I think it, it should be the last one from Gavro underscore 543. Your expert taste, mate. My grass is struggling in winter. Any help from the guru? Depends what type of grass it is. I mean, we can we can go into this all the time, but grass goes dormant during winter. Dep- if it's a winter grass, different story. Like rye, which is what's seeded on a lot of the grounds, i.e. Adelaide Oval, which is the best surface that you could possibly ever play on in Australia, I reckon. Because Do you agree with that? Not knowing the t- grass type? Yeah, however, last time we played there, the there was really long. Like, they let it grow out further than it has been in the past. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, great, great surface. Depends what type of grass you have. It's an open-ended question. Um, but a lot of the times, most people in WA, they'll probably have cooch or buffalo. Consider it dormant and don't worry about it. Once summer comes around or spring, when the the actual ground starts to get a bit warmer, then you'll start to be able to throw some fertilizer on it and then you can go from there. But at the moment, you're just throwing money onto your grass. It's probably not going to do a lot. So... Clarification: So you've got the normal grass that most people have. So yeah. just just let there's it die few, and, then, and then reload. In nah, summer. well it depends because if it's actually cooch, it will look like it's dying. But then once it starts to, because it's a weed, same as kikuyu, it's it'll. Oh, I can talk all day. Um, it'll come back. It'll come back. So no matter how much you could you could almost throw Roundup on kikuyu and cooch, and it will still pop up somewhere else because it's such a weed and it's so invasive. So it'll be okay. Depending, but if it's buffalo, different story. What's what's Yokine's grass that you're hitting off? Uh, T box is a cooch, I think, some sort of cooch, and then fairways a kaku. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts? Karen on- up is cooch. Yes, I know. What do what are your thoughts on Dommy Sheed lifting his hands in the air and saying I give up and paying for help for his grass? Is that all right as a, as a man and a guy with a little bit of time on his hands like Dommy? Uh, I mean, yeah, if you don't have the time, if you're not passionate about it too, if you need help, like, fair enough, put your hand up and ask. But there's nothing wrong with asking for help. No, but he's not asking for help. He's getting the help. Do you think that he should be looking after his own lawn? Oh, well, if he doesn't have the time, then yeah. Do you think Tommy has the time? Probably. Last question. <laughs> Damo Shields, are you annoyed your epic hanger in round 22, 2018 versus the Demons didn't get more attention? Did we lose that week? That's why I didn't get more attention. <laughs> I reckon we lost that week. You never want to have good... Oh, I can't even remember the hangar, so really? it mustn't have been that yet. Oh, we did lose, didn't we? We lost in the last um, minute of and the they game. They made the finals, and then we... Well, not me, you, dealt them in the prelim. Yeah, but this was very good, because that was that was a game that JD went down. Yeah. Remember the concussion? Yes, it was. Yeah. And we and we didn't have we didn't have um JK either. So we had no forwards. We had no, no yeah. key forwards and we only lost by three goals. Mm. And they were coming over but that pretty- that uh, we lost late, man, because the oh I can't remember what his name was. He kicked I think this is the one where he kicked the bullcrap goal at the top of the goal square, like out of the blue and pimped, yeah, yeah, yeah. And pimped it, pitched us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But well, we, we lost by down all day. Yeah, we're down all day, but we were in the fight. But we, just, we, lost we had by no three forwards. Goals, yeah, I think yeah. we lost by three. Yeah. It blew out in the last like thirty seconds okay. or something. Okay. But they they were very confident when they came over the final, and we were just like, oh, we've we've absolutely and utterly we've we've sharked them here. Do you remember we've this mark them. or not? Oh, I can't, mate. I actually must can't. have been that good. All right. No. So uh, yeah, don't feel bad because if I can't remember it, it's probably not that good. <laughs> All things considering, Yoey, I think it's unreal that you've come in and spoken to us today with what's going on in your world and especially this week. Gutting news, but life will go on, and you'll be back bigger and better than ever, as we all know. Oz, on behalf of Tab Touch and everyone, we are absolutely <laughs> thrilled to have you back in the studio, yeah, the thanks. golden boy, back oh, again. Can we, lose that? Can we lose that? One episode only, I promise, but I enjoyed it. And There's going to be a sign now because you've called it that. Uh, Oscar Allen, the golden boy, just like Tommy Barras, the mad dog from Scarborough. Oh, I'd, I'd know which one I'd rather bad luck. Yeah, than mad rock. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thanks, guys.
Yeah! Got the touch? You got Choose the tap touch. touch. Who you got for basketball? You win some, you lose more.